So today I'm going to talk about the MSRA and answer a lot of the commonly asked questions that I've received through private message, what I've seen posted in different questions and comments in various of the Facebook groups. MSRA stands for Multi-Specialty Recruitment Assessment and that's because that's exactly what it is. It's an assessment used as part of the recruitment process by multiple different specialties for recruitment at CT1, ST1 or ST3 level. So there's two papers, a professional dilemma paper with SJT questions and a clinical problem solving paper covering clinical questions mapped to various different clinical topics. So let's start looking at some of the frequently asked questions. So the first question is, do all specialties use the MSRA? No, not at all. Currently though, 12 specialties are using the MSRA. So at ST1 or CT1 level, the specialties are GP, psychiatry, child and adolescent mental health services, obstetrics and gynecology, community, sexual and reproductive health, emergency medicine, neurosurgery, clinical radiology, ophthalmology, anesthetics, and new from this year, core surgical training. Okay. At ST3 level, the only specialty that uses it is nuclear medicine. Okay. So if you're not applying for any of these specialties, you will not be sitting the MSRA. And you can't just sit the MSRA because it's not a standalone exam. It's used as part of recruitment. So what happens is when you apply for one of these specialties, if your application is accepted and you're long listed, then you'll be invited to book to sit the MSRA. So you can't just book it as a standalone exam. You can't just sit it for the sake of it. If you don't meet the eligibility criteria to enter specialty training in one of these specialties, and each one has its own requirements and eligibility. You need to read the person's specification. But if you don't, and if you don't apply via Oriel during the application window, you will never be able to book the MSRA. Okay. So now, another question I get asked is: Is the MSRA for GP different to the MSRA for ophthalmology? So the answer to that is no. The actual exam is the same for all specialties. However, how each specialty uses it is completely different. So for example, for GP, psychiatry, child and adolescent mental health services, 100% of your rank and 100% of your score is based on how you do in the two papers in the MSRA and the two papers are equally weighted. There's no interview, there's no OSCE, there's no portfolio station. It's just based on how you score in the exam. Whereas for all of the other specialties that use it, the MSRA is used primarily to shortlist candidates for limited number of interview slots. And then once you get there, your interview will make up the bulk of your rank. However, the MSRA score does carry over and it makes up different proportion of your rank for different specialties. Now, it's important though, you understand that the competition ratios are different for different specialties. So a score that might get you a job for GP might not even get you an interview, never mind a job, for radiology. Because radiology has far fewer jobs and is much more competitive in terms of applicants per post. Okay, so it's really important to understand that it's not a simple pass fail exam. Lots of doctors that pass the MSRA will never get an interview because their score wasn't competitive. Lots of doctors that pass the MSRA won't get a job for GP or psychiatry because their score wasn't competitive. So your score is competitively ranked. Okay, the better that you do compared to all the other applicants, the higher your score will be and the higher your rank will be compared to the other applicants for that particular specialty. So another question I get asked is, you know, I've looked on Oriel, I can't see a booking for the MSRA. So linked to a question I mentioned earlier, that this is a recruitment assessment. You cannot just book the MSRA as a standalone exam. All right. You have to apply for specialty training for one of the specialties that uses it. They will check your application, check that you meet the eligibility criteria for that specialty. And then once your application is long listed, that's when you'll be able to book a slot. You get an invitation to book a slot for the MSRA. And so where will you actually sit the exam? Most people will sit it at, at a Pearson View Test Centre. Now, there's hundreds of Pearson View Test Centres all over the world. Uh, just in the UK alone, there's over 100. OK, so in most major cities, there's a Pearson View Test Centre. And, it, you know, many countries outside the UK also will have uh, in larger cities, a Pearson View test centre. So you can go onto the Pearson View website when you get your invitation and see where's the nearest place to you and book it there. Another question I get asked is, how many times is the MSRA held each year? So it's usually held twice a year. 
One's for the round one applications. So the exam is usually in January for that. The application for specialty training for round one usually happen in November. And then the second round, round two, very few specialties recruit in round two. So most specialties is only once a year that there's an opportunity to apply. But some specialties will have a second round where the applications will open around July, August, and the MSRA will be available in September. Another question I often get asked is, how long does it take to prepare for the MSRA? So this goes back to understanding that this is not a simple pass-fail exam. So many doctors, if they crammed for you know, three, four weeks and were able to put a lot of hours in, could pass the MSRA. But a lot of those doctors then wouldn't get an interview and would therefore get no job. All right. Um, and for those specialties like GP and psychiatry that don't use an interview, again, their score might not be competitive enough for them to get a job. You see, you want to get the best score possible. So you're competing with other people. So how long does it take? It's going to differ based on your past experience, your existing knowledge, your existing exposure to the NHS, to ethical guidelines for the SJT paper, for example, and SJT type questions. Um, how much time you have, you know, how busy are you clinically in the rotation you're in? Uh, how busy are you outside of your work? You know, some people have got young kids and they're really busy outside of work. Some people are working in a and &E and they've got lots of night shifts, evenings, and you know, they're really tired when they get home and it's difficult to put in study time every day. So it's up to you to sort of fit in your study around all of your other commitments. But to give you an idea, if you wanted to cover all 2,200 plus practice questions on the eMedica online MSRA question bank, that would take about 100 hours of study time. That's to go through the bank once. Some doctors go through it more than once to maybe go over and revise topics that they are less confident in or they get a lower score in. But you know, to go over each question and read the answer and explanation and then maybe read around any topics that you didn't do well in, it's going to take 100 hours of study time. Okay, so can you imagine 100 hours of study time, if you could do one hour every day and maybe a little bit more on the weekend or on days off, that's going to take you probably three months. Some doctors, they can't fit an hour a day. You know, sometimes they could only do 20 minutes or half an hour. And then on the weekend, they might do a couple of hours. So some doctors might prepare for six months or even 12 months. Okay, some doctors, they might have time and be able to put in more than an hour a day. And so maybe they might be able to do a more intensive preparation and get through it all in between one to two months. So everyone's different, but that gives you a realistic idea. But of course, a lot of doctors that get really high scores are applying for really competitive specialties. Um, often they'll use multiple resources. So they might use our question bank. They might use another question bank like past medicine or MCQ bank um, or on examination. And alongside that, they might also use resources to read up on guidelines. So they might use textbooks like the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine, of clinical specialties, um, for some of the things around diagnosis and so on. But a lot of the guidelines have changed since both of these were published. Even if you get the latest edition, a lot of things have changed. So if you want to look up a specific guideline, you might look it up in NICE CKS. If you want to cover lots of guidelines efficiently, you might find the eMedica clinical case cards helpful. And so these, the latest edition was published this year. So they're bang up to date with current guidelines and it covers 112 different topics topic reviews they're very concise they're available either as a printed form or as a digital form or you can get a bundle with both the printed and the digital one. okay but the biggest message i can give to you is to understand that unlike a lot of exams like finals or plab which are pass fail and the score doesn't matter this is competitively ranked and every mark matters one mark could be the difference between you getting an interview and not getting an interview slot to give you an idea for example for radiology if there are just over 300 jobs, they'll typically only interview the top 600 scorers. But there might be 2,500 people applying. You've got to get one of those really high MSRA scores just to get an interview slot. Once you get the interview, the bulk of your rank is based on your portfolio and how you do an interview. But if you've got a brilliant portfolio, you're really good at interview, but you don't get that MSRA score, you're never going to get a chance to show them your portfolio. They're never even going to look at it because you won't get an interview slot. You see, so don't aim just to pass. Don't aim just to get the minimum, 
because that probably won't get you an interview, won't get you a job. What you want is the absolute best score possible. So please start early. Don't wait until your application has been accepted and you get the invitation. By the time the invitation comes, the exam is two, three weeks away. That's not enough time to prepare effectively in most cases. Okay, You should be starting even before you've applied would be ideal. Okay, At the very latest, once you've applied, you should be focusing on preparing for the MSRA. Please do not wait until you get the invitation to book because that will really leave you very little time. And you're competing with other people who have already been preparing for several months. Okay, so that's how long you know, does it take and how, how you could prepare. Okay, and you know, if you want resources to prepare, we have um, over 2,200 questions, as I mentioned, in the eMedica MSRA question bank. But we also have an intensive two day MSRA preparation course. First day, over seven hours of CPD focusing on the clinical paper, including a full clinical mock exam in timed sort of teaching conditions, and we'll review guidelines of over 100 different clinical topics mapped to the curriculum. And then the hold of day two is SJT. So we'll cover all of the key theory, GMC and ethical guidance and how to apply it, understanding the difference between section one and section two SJT questions. We'll look at lots of high challenge SJT scenarios and work through and discuss them in detail. We'll have a time teaching SJT mock. And it also includes access to all those 2,200 plus um, questions so just to recap, the MSRA is part of the recruitment process for lots of different specialties. If you're applying for multiple specialties, you can sit the exam just once and the score will automatically be populated into each specialty via Oriel. You will need to complete a full comp application via Oriel for that specialty and meet the eligibility requirements. Some doctors might meet the eligibility for one specialty, but not a different one, for example. Okay. Um, and in terms of how it's used, it's used differently by different specialties, but all of them, it's a competitive ranked process. So the higher you score, the greater your chance of number one, getting a job, number two, getting a job in the area that you want, or for those specialties that use it to shortlist, the higher chance of getting an interview slot, then the interview and portfolio will be the bulk of how you, you do, but this score carries over and makes up a proportion of it. Okay, so again, it's not just a simple pass fail. It's getting the best score possible. Start early, work hard, prepare, and you will succeed. Any questions, ask me in the comments and I'll be happy to help. Thank you so much and all the best with your application, with your preparation and with your exam. Thank you.